Yu Sung found himself in a courtroom frustrated and angry after receiving a 200-hour community service sentence for stealing from a jewelry store. He felt that the punishment was too severe and he even questioned if his lack of a mother had influenced the judge's decision. In a fit of anger, he grabbed a chair and slammed it on the floor while shouting his discontent even suggesting that judges should be doing community service work themselves. The loud noise from the chair hitting the floor prompted immediate intervention from police officers who were concerned about the judge's well-being. The judge taken aback by this outburst, especially after 15 years of handling juvenile cases, he instructed Yoon Sung to pick up the chair warning him that it could be seen as an insult to the legal system if he didn't comply. Yoon Sung's guardian attempted to intervene but Yoo Sung responded disrespectfully to the judge leading to the application of Juvenile Law No. 9. Subsequently, the police escorted Yoon Sung and other young offenders to Yangchen Information and Communication School colloquially known as Yangchen Detention School. It was a facility where underage criminals from various backgrounds were housed. An officer advised Yoon Sung not to make eye contact with fellow detainees and to walk in a straight line. However, a robust-looking individual at the school recognized Yoon Sung as Lee Yoon Sung from Yoon Sung Jian Middle School. Despite the officer's attempt to prevent the man Han Jehun from approaching Yoon Sung, Jehun remarked that it had been a long time and urged Yoon Sung to come to him after roll call. After this interaction, another officer warned Yoon Sung about Jehun describing him as someone at the facility for blackmail and sexual assault. The officer also made a derogatory comment about Yoon Sung's association with Jehun. This officer was identified as Correctional Officer Lee Gwakian responsible for managing the detainees in the school. Meanwhile, when Jehun's friend inquired about Yoon Sung, Jehun dismissed him as a loser referencing his reputation from middle school. Yoon Sung later encountered Jehun and another person who taunted and assaulted him. Jehun questioned if Yoon Sung thought he was different now referring to his time in the detention center. Jihun made references to Yoon Sung's suicide attempt in a school restroom which had led to charges of school violence against them. During this tense confrontation, Jihun asked Yoon Sung to remove his pants like in the old days provoking anger and discomfort. Yoon Sung's response however was surprising. He agreed that he missed Jihun and proceeded to kiss him taking Jihun off guard. Correctional officer Lee recollected a past encounter with Yoon Sung. In that encounter, Yu Sung had made a troubling accusation suggesting that the officer was involved in a case of statutory rape. This revelation deeply concerned the officer as he feared Yoon Sung might possess knowledge of the incident. Yoon Sung also knew about the officer's inappropriate encounter with an underage girl which further added to the officer's unease. Returning to the present, Yoon Sung aggressively confronted Jihun leading to a violent altercation. Jihun's friends rushed to get correctional officer Lee while Yoon Sung inflicted severe injuries upon Jihun. The confrontation was marked by brutality and Yoon Sung displayed his fighting skills and aggressiveness. Yoon Sung overpowered Jihun's friend and Jihun attempted to attack Yoon Sung with a wooden bar. However, Yoon Sung remained unscathed and retaliated by pummeling Jihun's face, ultimately fracturing Jihun's ankle. Jihun writhing in agony implored Yoon Sung to stop and express remorse for his past mistreatment and bullying. Yoon Sung coldly responded to Jihun's plea by twisting his other foot until it too broke. In this intense moment, Jihoon implored Yoon Sung to stop and apologize for any wrongdoings. Yoon Sung reflected on his motivations for learning to fight citing his discontent with the South Korean legal system and his desire for revenge. As the violence continued, Correctional Officer Lee arrived at the scene to intervene and halt Yoon Sung's actions. Upon hearing the warden's voice, Yoon Sung released Jihoon's foot. Yoon Sung then approached the warden with the intent to share a humorous story. He leaned in and whispered that he had come to seek revenge but not against Jehun. The warden's actions were minor compared to what another individual had done to him. He had come to meet that person. Meanwhile, someone informed Park Sankyol, a former amateur kickboxing medalist who was bullying some guys, that a certain Lee Yoon-sung had broken Yoon-sung's ankle. In the past, Park Sankyol had been an eccentric individual. He had a habit of trying out strange experiments he had seen online. For instance, he once came across a video about a drink that was so peculiar you couldn't distinguish it from urine. Out of sheer curiosity, he grabbed a glass of the drink and a glass of his urine and asked Yu Sung to taste and compare them. Sankyol's curiosity knew no bounds. On one occasion, he had watched a video about the effects of consuming laxatives and an antidiarrheal pill together. His curiosity led him to use Yoon Sung as a subject for this experiment despite warnings that it could be dangerous and harm the intestines. One day Park and his friends made Yoon Sung carry all their bags and barged into his house knowing that his mother, grandma, and sister were not at home. They ransacked the place while Yoon Sung helplessly tried to stop them. 
Suddenly, Park checked Yoon Sung's forehead and asked if he had a cold because he had been sweating profusely. Yoon Sung was puzzled by Park's actions, but when he offered him medicine to feel better, Yoon Sung momentarily regarded him as a friend and took the pill without knowing it was cold medicine. After taking the pill, Yoon Sung started to hallucinate and eventually passed out, feeling as if he were floating on water, and even his unusual friends seemed comical, transforming into bizarre creatures. Park gave Yoon Sung a towel and instructed him to heat it in the microwave. However, an explosion occurred and Yoon Sung's home was engulfed in flames. After a while, he woke up in a hospital with two officers from the Seodong police station present to take his statement. He couldn't recall their questions, but his house had been completely destroyed and his face bore a large burn scar. A few days later, when he returned to school, Sankyol made a sarcastic comment about the explosion being bigger than what he had seen on YouTube. He told Yoo Sung to be thankful because he had dragged him down to the first floor. When Yoo Sung didn't respond, Sankyol became furious at him for not showing gratitude. Yoo Sung reflected that the scariest aspect of bullying is encountering someone with whom you can't communicate that feeling of hopelessness when you don't know where to begin a conversation. He believed that the fear of this imagination leads people to give up. After school, he visited the House of Hope 119, where his mother and grandmother were. His mom asked him why he had told the officer that he had set the house on fire. He explained that the officers had informed him that all his other friends had blamed him for setting the house on fire after taking a pill. His mother questioned what they should do since they couldn't claim insurance for the fire and might even face charges for insurance fraud. They also couldn't afford to compensate their neighbors for damage. Their situation was dire. Returning to the present, the correctional officer escorted Yoon Sung to another room where Park sang was being held. He explained that there had been an incident necessitating a temporary change in Yoon Sung's room. He asked the inmates in that room to welcome Yoon Sung and help him with any questions. Yoon Sung concealed his face with a pile of towels and when the correctional officer departed, one of the guys attempted to provoke Yoon Sung. Yoon Sung swiftly kicked him down and the others rushed to retaliate. From behind the towels, Yoo Sung declared that he had come to meet the curious guy and revealed his face. Sankyol recognized him and Yoon Sung inquired if Sankyol still possessed his insatiable curiosity. When Sankyol expressed his curiosity, Yoon Sung offered to share the method to defeat a professional kickboxer with just one finger. Yoo Sung had a tattoo on his body resembling someone in the throes of being consumed by fire. When he got this tattoo, the artist inquired about its significance. Yoo Sung explained that it was a tribute to his grandmother, so he'd never forget her. In the present, Yoo Sung asked Sankyol if he understood how a kickboxer like him could be defeated with just one finger. Sankyol confessed that he had no idea, prompting Yoo Sung to ask him to ponder it. Unexpectedly, Yoo Sung retrieved a spray from under the blankets and aimed it at Sankyol's eyes. Then he delivered a forceful kick to Sankyol's groin, causing him to cry out in agony. Sankyol couldn't open his eyes as they were stinging terribly. Seizing this opportunity, Yoon Sung began landing punches on Sang Kyol's face and delivering kicks to his stomach. He had learned that the key to fighting was to target the opponent's lower body if they defended their upper body and vice versa. Sang Kyol tried to punch back but his vision was compromised and his attempts were futile. He believed that if he could buy enough time to clear his eyes, he could defeat Yoon Sung. Sang Kyol flailed punches into thin air in an attempt to hit Yoon Sung but Yoon Sung used a towel to trap his arm and twisted it forcing him to kneel. Yu Sung then struck Sankyol's face and slammed it onto the ground causing bleeding. Yu Sung taunted Sankyol asking how it felt to be beaten with a towel that had been heated in a microwave. Yu Sung reminisced about his grandmother who had fallen into a coma after her house was destroyed. She had pretended everything was fine in front of her family but her condition deteriorated upon seeing Yu Sung's burn mark. Unexpectedly Sankyol thanked Yu Sung because he had managed to clear his eyes using his blood and could now see. Sankyol attempted to kick Yoon Sung and questioned if he wanted to die. Yoon Sung skillfully evaded his attacks. Sankyol cornered Yoon Sung against a wall and commented on how it brought them back to a time when Yoon Sung made a buzzing sound like a bug every time he was beaten. He mocked Yoon Sung for wheezing and moaning back, then vowing to beat him even worse this time for crossing the line with the spray. Meanwhile, Yoon Sung recalled advice from his fighting trainer. The trainer had suggested using a spray to blind the opponent and placing something like a blanket on the ground. Yoon Sung followed these instructions. When Sang Kyol attempted to kick him, he stumbled due to the blanket and Yoon Sung seized the opportunity to attack. In the past, Sang Kyol had mocked Yoon Sung during a live stream revealing that Yoon Sung's nickname at school was Two-Face and accusing him of starting the fire. Sang Kyol had also promised to show Yoon Sung's grandmother who was in a coma because of him in the next live stream. 
Yu Sung couldn't forget these moments, so he continued to pummel Sankyeol, relentlessly punching him and breaking his finger. Sankyeol cried out in pain, but Yu Sung didn't relent because he remembered Sankyeol's merciless taunts about his grandmother. Yu Sung proceeded to stuff fabric clips into Sankyeol's mouth, declaring that Sankyeol's constant chatter had always been the issue. He told Sankyeol to stop talking because talking was something only humans did, and he resumed his assault. Yu Sung knew that some people advised letting go of the past and moving on, claiming that time would heal all wounds. However, Yu Sung vehemently rejected that notion. He had learned to fight because he despised those who tried to diminish the pain he had endured. Five months later, in a jail cell at the detention center, Yu Sung choked Sankyeol until he passed out. He then instructed another inmate to check on Sankyeol and recorded that it was the fourth time Sankyeol had passed out that day. Over the past five months, they had made Sankyeol pass out a total of 898 times and it was about to be his 900th time. Yu Sung told the guy to keep watch and the guy immediately warned that the officers were coming. The officer in charge Kim Chong Ok arrived and demanded to know why there was so much noise in cell number 203. Yu Sung pointed out that the noise was coming from cell number 204, not their room, and asked why they were singled out. The officer told them to be quiet and left muttering about not understanding why cell number 204 received special treatment. Another officer explained that they were under orders to protect Yoon Sung and it was less than a week until his release. Yoon Sung noted that he would be leaving in the next six days and needed to start preparing for his next plan. Simultaneously, there was an announcement for visitors to gather in the meeting room under the guidance of their teachers. A woman came to the detention center to visit Yoon Sung and during their meeting, she kept smiling at him. Yoon Sung asked her to stop smiling as it made him uncomfortable but she explained that they were supposed to be playing siblings and needed to look like a family. Yoon Sung questioned why she was dressed in a suit and she asked him to forget about it. She then inquired about how it felt to take revenge to which Yoon Sung told her to stop with unnecessary talk and pass on the materials to the next guy. She complained about Yoon Sung's rudeness but he instructed her about their next target Yangbom. She shared information that Yangbom had moved to Gangnam and came from a wealthy family the hospital director's grandson excelled in academics and cared for his classmates. In the meantime, Yangbom's teacher informed him that his grades had improved and gave him some notes to distribute to class 3. Yangbom noticed the ring on the teacher's hand and congratulated her on her upcoming wedding. As he left, he thought about the teacher with a creepy smile. Yoon Sung's pretend sister Joanna shared further information about Yangbom mentioning that he was also a student council member and an exemplary student. She showed Yoon Sung a picture and asked if it was the guy he had talked about. Yoon Sung recalled that Yangbom had been present when Sankyeol mocked him during the live stream. Yoon Sung expressed his hatred for Yangbom, emphasizing that Yangbom destroyed his life despite appearing as a model student to others. Later, Yoon Sung returned to a room with other prisoners who were kneeling in front of him. One of them reported that Sankyeol had skipped lunch and Yoon Sung choked him for neglecting meals, mentioning that it was all paid for with tax money. When Sankyeol apologized, Yoon Sung reminded him not to speak because only humans were allowed to talk. Sankyeol suffered from various health issues including speech disorders, ataxia, impaired concentration, decreased consciousness, shoulder subluxation, and even PTSD due to repeated trauma. His brain had suffered damage due to a lack of oxygen leading to a decline in his intelligence. Yu Sung finished his 899th strangulation and pondered that it was six days before his release and he would spend this time completing a thousand strangles. He instructed the guys to verify the count and get tissues because Sankyeol had soiled himself. Six days later, Yu Sung was released from detention. Miss Joanna, his pretend sister, welcomed him outside the school in a luxurious car. She asked if he was ready to go, and as they traveled destination, a makeup artist enhanced Yoon Sung's appearance. They reached the school, and the makeup artist placed a wig on Yoon Sung's head to conceal his burn scar. Yoo Sung felt ready to return to Gangnam High School. Yu Sung felt ready to enter the school and acknowledged that his makeup was decent. The makeup artist remarked to Joanna that Yoon Sung lacked manners and Joanna agreed but brushed it off explaining that young people his age often reacted that way. In the meantime, Yangbom was preoccupied with thoughts of his teacher's upcoming wedding driving him to the brink of madness. However, he was interrupted when he overheard students discussing a transfer student in class 3 who was described as handsome. They decided to go and see this new student. Simultaneously, the teacher in class 3 introduced Yoon Sung to the class and instructed him to take an empty seat. She also informed the class about an upcoming mock test and warned them to take it seriously. As Yoon Sung made his way to his seat, a student stopped him to complain that his introduction had been annoying. Unfortunately, the teacher had left the class at that moment. 
Bullies pressured the student to repeat the complaint more loudly. Yu Sung retaliated by kicking the bully and fending off the attacker's friends. He managed to gain the upper hand in the altercation shocking the class. Yu Sung then dusted off his clothes and with a hint of sarcasm offered to reintroduce himself. He shared his name and age and mentioned his interests and dislikes noting that what he hated was not currently present. News of the transfer student beating Park Sungo and his gang on his first day quickly spread throughout the school. As Yangbam and a female classmate walked down the school hallway she inquired about the incident involving the new transfer student. Yangbam expressed disinterest explaining that he considered new transfers as just another thug from somewhere else. She admired his maturity for not caring about such matters and Yangbam elaborated that he disliked a noisy school and didn't care about fights. Meanwhile, Yu Sung was accosted by some students in the bathroom who questioned his involvement in the earlier fight. Two others stood guard at the bathroom door to prevent anyone from entering. However, a student accidentally fell against the door shattering the glass. Inside the bathroom, Yu Sung single-handedly fought off the students noting their expensive clothing and expressing his envy. While continuing to overpower them, a third-year gang leader named Kim Sangwook appeared and confronted Yu Sung inquiring about his identity and taunting him. Outside the bathroom, Yangbam and the girl arrived and she was shocked to see Sangwook being pummeled by the new student. She urged Yangbam to do something and suggested he go call the teachers but Yangbam appeared conflicted. He left the girl with the notes he was carrying and when asked if he was leaving because of the fight told her to be quiet for a moment because he needed to think. He then walked away promising to see her later. After school, while Yu Sung was heading home Sangwook approached him and asked him to follow him. Sangwook offered to do whatever Yu Sung wanted. They found Yangbam who inquired if Yu Sung was the transfer student who had knocked out some students upon arrival. Yu Sung remained silent when asked about his academic skills and Yangbam deduced that Yu Sung was the quiet type. Yangbam introduced himself as a sponsor for students who excelled in fighting and directly inquired about Yu Sung's financial needs. Yangbam explained that his family owned Build Family and asked if Yu Sung was familiar with a hospital in the area. Yu Sung recalled a moment when Yangbam had sarcastically asked him about his family's living situation after their house had burned down and Yu Sung hadn't forgotten that encounter. He had come to seek revenge against Yangbam. Yu Sung revealed his identity and Yangbam recognized him from their past interactions. Yangbam recalled the time he had inquired whether Yu Sung had an older sister and reached out to check Yu Sung's burn scar. However, when he saw no scar, he began to doubt if this was the same Yu Sung. Yu Sung clarified that he shared the same name as Lee Yun Sung who had been targeted during the live broadcast in the past. During that live stream, Park Sankyol had claimed he would reveal the extent of the loser Yun Sung's brutal actions. He had gone as far as apologizing to all the Lee Yun Sung's in Korea placing blame on their mothers for naming them similarly and even making an offensive gesture to the viewers. Yu Sung wanted to meet Yangbam at least once because Yangbam had been part of the group that had bullied him during the live stream. He mentioned his irritation about the incident and asked Yangbam if he understood how much he'd been bothered by it. Yangbam seemed taken aback and asked if Yu Sung was furious over just that. Yu Sung explained that it was the principal reason but suggested that if Yangbam could offer sufficient compensation it might help alleviate his irritation. He had heard that Yangbam was wealthy and wanted to see how sincere Yangbam's offer was. He hoped that Yangbam wouldn't speak thoughtlessly about sponsorship matters. However, Yangbam found it ridiculous that Yu Sung would expect an equal relationship with him and expressed his unwillingness to work under someone. He declared his liking for Yun Sung and instructed everyone to go down to the building they were on top of. While descending, Yangbam shared that the building belonged to his father but that he managed and owned it. He mentioned the study cafes on the second and fourth floors. The fifth floors function as a single single rumor runaway boys were sometimes provided shelter and the first floors cafe and underground sauna. He took Yu Sung to the sauna where they encountered a large guy named Kyung Min. Yu Sung recognized Kyung Min from a previous encounter with his sister. Yang Bam informed Kyung Min about Yoon Sung and clarified that he was different from the Yoon Sung they knew. He mentioned that Yu Sung was skilled in fighting and had the audacity to confront them. Kyung Min, however, didn't take kindly to Yoon Sung's attitude and threatened to harm him. Yang Bam intervened, demanding that they both calm down and question loyalty and respect. He assigned Yu Sung a task, considering it a test since he didn't trust him entirely. Yu Sung was tasked with bringing some girls to a designated location and leaving them there. He successfully completed the task by escorting the girls to the shelter and the hotel on the fifth floor where they were offered protection. Yang Bam praised Yu Sung for his good work and then instructed him to follow Kyung Min who would brief him on his next task. 
As Yu Sung trailed Kyung Min, he recalled a conversation with Joanna in which she emphasized the need to infiltrate Yang Bom's group and gain his trust. She explained that they couldn't simply capture Yang Bom for a minor act of violence as he always had an escape plan ready. Joanna believed that they had to handle Yang Bom carefully and discreetly. Kyung Min led Yu Sung into a room where other individuals were working on fake driver's licenses. He explained that they helped new arrivals at the shelter by creating fake IDs in their names. The goal was to rent a car and sell it to an illegal car dealer making the miners indebted to them by 50 million won. Those who had taken out loans or had parents with insurance as collateral would owe them 100 million won. Kyung Min also revealed that Yang Bom controlled everything in the area making him untouchable. Yu Sung understood that anyone who had visited the shelter owed Yang Bom and this realization fueled his determination to send them all to hell personally. Yu Sung decided to start his revenge with Choi Kyung Min determined to end the torment of Kyung Min's disgusting laughter. Kyung Min handed Yu Sung a consent form for the protection shelter and instructed him to get the girl's fingerprints on the document indicating that he was now in charge of them. Yu Sung observed that at a quick glance, the contract appeared to be a standard protection agreement. However, it was deviously mixed with fraudulent loan clauses a combination that if not carefully examined would lead unsuspecting signers down a path to hellish debt. Kyung Min claimed that pretty young girls would repay the debt quickly so there was nothing to worry about. As Yu Sung took the contract to the girls' room, he tossed it in their direction instructing them to stamp their fingers on it if they wanted to stay in the shelter. One of the girls was offended by this approach and mentioned that they had been cautioned against signing contracts recklessly. The girls expressed their unwillingness to sign such a document and warned that they would call the police and leave if they were pressured. Realizing the difficulty of his task, Yoon Sung decided to give in to their demands and pretended to head for the door. The girls believed he was leaving out of fear when they mentioned involving the police. Suddenly, Yoon Sung locked the door, trapping the girls inside. They began to yell at him to open the door and their voices alerted Kyung Min who rushed to the room. After unlocking the door, he asked Yoon Sung what he was trying to achieve. Yu Sung claimed that he had managed to get one of the girl's fingerprints on the contract but that the other had resisted. Kyung Min couldn't fathom what had just happened and considered Yu Sung a complete lunatic concluding that he had purposely placed the girls in a room with CCTV to test Yu Sung. Yang Bom arrived expressing his apologies to Yoon Sung explaining that in his line of work trust was paramount and verification was necessary. He commended Yoon Sung and expressed his approval of their future working relationship. Yang Bom assured Yoon Sung that the girls were the ones he had initially brought in. Yoon Sung recognized that he had to act the part of a troublemaker to draw Yang Bom out of his secretive shell. Yang Bom thought Yoon Sung was looking for excitement and announced that they would begin working the next day. Kyung Min turned off the room's lights informing Yoon Sung that he would be given proper instruction and that their initial task would be to install hidden cameras in the female members' rooms. As Kyung Min explained how to use the red cellophane to spot the cameras, Yoon Sung knew he was fully inside Joe Young Bom's world where the crime would soon commence. With his preparations complete, Yoon Sung had to focus on his next plan. Kyung Min admitted that Young Bom was intelligent and had constructed an ant nest to eliminate people like them. He recalled the internet crimes from the past and discussed how Yang Bom had tormented the true outcast who shared Yoon Sung's name. He revealed that the live broadcast with the real outcast was entirely Yang Bom's idea. Kyung Min detailed how Yang Bom preferred to manipulate people from behind the scenes and skillfully turn them. He began recounting the time they had brought outcast's older sister to Yang Bom mentioning her family's misfortune with their burnt-down house. When he was about to discuss the sister's appearance, Yoon Sung interrupted claiming the camera wasn't working. Kyung Min was initially irritated but realized Yoon Sung was holding an extension cord. In his frustration, Yoon Sung grabbed Kyung Min's arm and broke it then twisted the cord around Kyung Min's hand to shatter his fingers. As Kyung Min cried out in pain and confusion, Yoon Sung revealed the shocking truth to him. He whispered in Kyung Min's ear that Lee Nayeon was his elder sister and that he was the same outcast as his little brother. Yu Sung told Kyung Min to laugh like he had earlier, but Kyung Min was left stunned by the revelation. Yu Sung recollected his childhood and the pivotal role his sister Nan played in his life. They were three years apart in age, and Nan had always been a source of support, especially since Yu Sung was smaller and shorter than kids his age. Despite the age gap, Nan had been his rock during the tough times leading up to the house fire incident. After the arson case, their house had turned into a semi basement room in a linked house of a public institution. While the environment was less than ideal, the fortunate thing was that the agreement with the victims was progressing well. Na'an was on the cusp of puberty and living in a dormitory. One day Yu Sung and his mother were doing house chores when his mother asked if something had happened. 
Yu Sung was confused and his mother probed further asking if he had been pressured by school friends to engage in activities like burning down their house and doing drugs. Yu Sung was tormented wondering if his mother would believe him if he confessed to the truth. He was about to speak when the door swung open and Na An entered inquiring about the state of their home. She grabbed Yoon Sung's face in frustration but was stunned to see the burn mark on his face. She asked what had happened and noticed that their mother appeared frail. The truth gradually emerged as they recounted everything to Na An who was shocked by their revelations. Even their grandmother was affected by mental trauma. Yoon Sung couldn't bring himself to say anything and sat there silently wishing he had spoken the truth. At school, after class, Yu Sung was assigned the duty of collecting printouts from the teacher's office. He needed to request permission from a chat room that included all the students in his class for practically everything he did. Frodo with glasses permitted him to go to the teacher's office but Yu Sung had a strong suspicion about who the mastermind behind this system was even though he lacked concrete evidence. He had to seek permission even to use the restroom and when he didn't receive it one time, he ended up wetting himself leading to laughter and mockery from his entire class. Yu Sung felt like he was on the verge of losing his sanity. He recalled a day when he was carrying heavy bags and getting bullied. Naan saw the bullies kicking Yoon Sung on the ground and in a flash, she struck one of the bullies across the face leaving the others in shock. That day everything happened quickly and although many students had bullied Yoon Sung, Naan happened to witness that particular incident and reacted with fiery anger. Yoon Sung felt relief seeing his sister Naan intervene. Notably, he also noticed Yangbam standing nearby observing Na An as she confronted the bullies. This incident seemed to pique Yangbam's interest. Afterward, Yangbam approached Yoon Sung saying that he would prohibit everything. Na An eventually noticed Yoon Sung's phone and saw all the messages about him. She questioned him in anger but Yoon Sung tried to downplay the situation by claiming they were just jokes among friends. Na An, however hugged him tightly saying that it must be painful for him to endure it all alone and reassured him that he had his sister with him. This emotional moment moved Yoon Sung to tears and Na An comforted him telling him that everything would be okay and that he could rely on her. Lee Na Hyun observed a stout figure nearby and wondered if he was the one who had instigated bullying against her younger brother. He responds with a sigh and says that he dropped out of school and that it's his first time meeting Yoon Sung, claiming that she doesn't know anything. He mentioned running an errand for others who had asked him to accompany her somewhere. Meanwhile, Jo Young Biem was in his father's Mercedes, spraying cologne and checking himself in the mirror. He had breath fresheners handy to avoid any embarrassment about bad breath. Nervous yet hopeful, he worried about potential trouble if he continued in the car. Jo Young Biem is excited too and being attracted to an older woman, that too one of his classmates' sisters nevertheless for a boy going through puberty. Lee Na Hyun opened the car door and found herself facing a boy who is trembling with excitement. He calls her and surprises for her presence. He demanded to know how he knew her name. He responded nervously, saying it wasn't strange for him to know the name of a classmate sister, claiming he was close friends with Lee Yoon Sung. As he continues to say that he was about to ask something to him, she cuts him off saying not to bullshit her and grabs him by the collar and asks whether he is the pro guy wearing glasses. She throws him out of the car and questions whether his parents knew what he was doing, going around and bullying all the kids. She continues to ask him about his car since he is still in his middle school. The fantasies of him being around an older woman has turned to dust. He debated whether he has to apologize or to run away and starts calling her Nuna, quickly corrects himself and calls her Ms. Lee. He argued that she appears to be unaware of how the children behave nowadays and that such things are of nothing. He thinks he has to stand his ground and he asks her about juvenile offenders. He claims that nothing will happen to them no matter what they do and that if they come at him like this, it will be his little brother that will be in trouble if they pushed him. He thinks that he is right and that he is still a minor. Lee Na Hyun couldn't take it anymore. She quickly gives a tight slap on his face and screamed that he must be out of his mind, vowing to help him find it. She continues to hit him repeating his words that nothing will happen to them and says that it is really his lucky day since he can finally find out if his little theory is correct or not. Jo Young Biem's plan was simple, until his sister has beaten the life out of him. She puts him in his car and advises him from the outside to get himself to home and that she called in a driver to come pick him up. With fear, he agrees to her. She threatens him that she will rip him to shreds if he lays his hand on her little brother ever again and that she will be watching over him. Jo Young Biem is sitting in his car, facing utter humiliation, 
along with that humiliation that came from being beaten up by a woman made him horrified. The chunky person is walking towards the car and sees Lee Na Hyun returning back and thinks that he finished. Jo Young Biem shouts from the car, calling Choi Jae Young Min, the chunky person to catch her, and he immediately presses the accelerator of his car. He tries to run over her with his car in frustration and hits a tree. After both of them escape, Choi Jiang Min shouts at him saying that he almost killed him along with her. She was shocked to see him trying to kill her and falls on the ground. Jo Young Biem says that she won't be able to dodge the next one and turns the car towards her. He threatens he will break her legs and make her a cripple, running the car towards her and breaking her legs. After this incident, Yoon Sung's sister lost both of her legs and she gave up track and field. She has started swimming, but not long after she was killed in an accident. In the current scene, Yoon Sung stood behind Choi Jiang Min, recounting the entire incident while restraining him. Fear etched across his face. He asked if Choi Jiang Min had returned for revenge against him and Jo Yang Biem. He responds saying not to joke and asks if such a thing can work on a person like him. Swiftly, Yoon Sung tied an elastic string to his hand and pulled it in the opposite direction, causing Choi Jiang Min's hand to break. Yoon Sung claims that there won't be any change since there is a limit to physical things. He thinks of something else and says if he came here to break everything that is related to the two of them. Suddenly, a message pops up on Jo Young Biem's phone. He checks it, only to see a message which says that his account has been suspended and to visit the nearby branch for more information. He thinks of it as a phishing attack and tries to ignore it. Then again, loads of messages arrive, claiming that his accounts have been suspended. He then realizes that all of his accounts have been suspended at once. When Choi Jiang Min asks what is he going to do, he replies that it might have started by now and he asks him to listen his first step of his exquisite plan. While sitting on his back with his body on the floor, he pulls the elastic band tightly and says that his deceased body will be found there. When he shouts at him, he says not to get him wrong since he won't be the person to kill him and that will be Jo Yong Biem himself is going to do the deed while he is enraged to his maximum. Jo Yong Biem's angry expression contorted as he bit his lip, bleeding himself. The noise drew his parents to his room, their faces etched with concern as they asked what was wrong. They look at him and find all the items in his room thrown away everywhere. He apologizes to them and says that his grades went down and they were not as he expected, making him feel a bit frustrated. They advise him not to isolate himself to study and get some fresh air and relax for a while. Despite their reassurances, they worried about his well-being as he closed the door on them. His father says that he'll be fine, and that is okay for them to be frustrated from time to time. Choi Jiang, trembling with pain and unease, questioned why Jo Yong Biem would want to kill him. Yoon Sung says that he is sure about Jo Yong Biem reaching out to him and questions if he remembers about the bank book he gave him earlier. Yoon Sung revealed he had played a trick with it, asking if all Choi Jiang's bank accounts were linked to that book. Earlier, Jo Young Biem had given Choi Jiang a book under a homeless person's identity, claiming it would be used for his monthly salary and bonuses starting the next day. Yoon Sung noticed deleted transaction histories, recovered them, and thereby uncovered all linked accounts that had been used. He accused Choi Jiang of stealing a significant amount of Jo Young Biem's money. Yoon Sung disclosed that he had reported those accounts and got them suspended. Hearing this, he cries and struggles with pain. He further says that he had made the report on Choi Jiang's name since the accounts were made in the name of homeless people. He assures Choi Jiang not to worry since unless he reports to the police about the account suspension, he will never know the real reason for the sudden suspension. He then asks who exactly will Jo Yang be him suspect. Yoon Sung, giving Choi Jiang a chance and asks him to choose wisely. If Choi Jiang weighed his options, if he reveals about Yoon Sung, then all the money he embezzled will be found out. If something goes wrong, then Choi Jiang has to bear full responsibility for what he has reported. Yoon Sung asks him if he thinks Jo Young Biem would leave him. After a while, a person stood on top of Choi Jiang and questioning if he suspended those accounts without knowing anything. Choi Jiang denied involvement, but Quan Chong Su delivered a powerful slap that sent him flying away. That person is Quan Chong Su who is the fourth generation of Goryeo and with the title of the knife of Jo Yong Biem. He claims that he sensed betrayal from the start, 
and that he had no right to do anything besides being with Zhou Yang Biam. Zhou Yang Biam walks from the behind and says that he has to be the main suspect if there was a traitor among them inside this business. Zhou Yang Biam further claims only his accounts were suspended and it happened at once. Zhou Yang Biam says he didn't want to suspect him, but all the situations are a perfect match, advising him to speak out the truth. Choi Jiang thinks that Yoon Sung wants him to pretend he doesn't know anything, and cutting him to keep his promises. Lee Yoon Sung thinks about the events earlier when he is speaking with Choi Jiang about a solution, and threatening him that he has no choice but to listen to him when he was about to snap out because of his response. Lee Yoon Sung entered the room saying that he will take care of the rest and walks by Jo Young Biam towards Choi Jiang with an angry face. He begins to hit him so harshly that shocked everyone in the room. When the giant moved to interfere, Jo Young Biam signals him to wait and tells him that he is the new recruit, who is doing something interesting. With the same face, he questions Jo Young Biam for trying him to drag him into his mess. Zhou Yang Biam was puzzled by his question and questions his intention in barging in right into the room. Yoon Sung pulls up a sachet from Choi Jiang's pocket and says that he is responsible for the whole operation. He continues to accuse that such a person is responsible for the money is an addict. He claims that everything is because of Choi Jiang and continues to hit him. Choi Jiang thinks in his mind that Li Yong Sung's solution was to turn him into an addict and concluding that he is really insane. Zhou Yang Biam asks him to pause and wanted to clarify that the accounts were being suspended because of his use of drugs, and begins to understand the situation. He questions Li Yun Sung on his intention to be upset about him. He cuts him to clarify him that he has a reason, that he was about to lose all his earned money since he had used that account which he has declared it to be safe. He demanded him in what way will he take responsibility for his money, and says that he's as sensitive if it's about money and to think carefully before answering. Zhou Yang Biam snaps out of his paws and agrees that there is nothing more important than money, assuring him that he will compensate for everything. He claims to have an offer for him, which is nothing hard but to take Choi Jiang's position since he has the knowledge to deal with funds and since the position is empty for now. Choi Jiang, who is bleeding on the ground, thinks in his mind that it was Yoon Sung's actual goal to trample and take his place while using loopholes of the fake back account and acknowledges it as a perfect plan. He thinks the reason this genius used him as a bait was to take advantage of Zhou Yang Biam's doubtful nature. He further thinks about the time it took to plan it and that he has nothing to do at this rate. Quan Chong Su cuts Zhou Yang Biam and asks him to stop. He walks up to Li Yun Sung saying that the eyes are the window to a person's heart and that his eyes are full of trickery and anger. The only thing Choi Jiang didn't take into account for the perfect plan of Li Yun Sung is the two-meter figure of Quan Chong Su which is an impenetrable, invincible wall. He claims that his eyes are lying and he can't leave him alone and wants to pluck his eyeballs out. Li Yun Sung covers his face with hoodie and questions if he knew him. He argues that just because he is bigger than him doesn't mean he'll be scared of him. Li Yun Sung already predicted that he cannot avoid the fight, recalling the teachings of a person on how to fight if he is confronted by a giant. Li Yun Sung says he is trying to use what he has learned and takes his stance, when Quan Chong Su questions his actions, Li Yun Sung informs his trainer that he plans to wear a mask while he fights. He explained that an adhesive would be used to keep the mask on his face, and that it might fall off in the middle of the fight. Deducing that fighting the opponent in close quarters would be risky, and since the opponent here is large, fighting him at a distance would be a disadvantage. Then his trainer advises him to keep his hood up while fighting, and keep it as tight as possible. As the fight commenced, Li Yun Sung runs towards his opponent immediately and tries to push him down, but he doesn't even move an inch. He questioned if Li Yun Sung thought he couldn't be hit while clinging to him, and catches his hoodie and in an attempt to throw him away, which resulted in pulling off his hoodie. He then remembers the words of his trainer, who had revealed the reason to keep his hoodie right is not for his mask but to make removing his clothes simpler. Further, he tells him to first close the distance and make it so that they can't use their fists also to target the blind spot that reveals when he takes off the hoodie when he tries to grab him, and end it in one blow. Li Yun Sung seized his opponent, kicked his legs out from under him, and landed blows to his face and cursing him for seeing him as an amateur. Before he could strike a second one, Zhou Yang Biam interrupts him and says that should be enough for him. When Quan Chong Su was ready to retaliate, Zhou Yang Biam commands both of them to stop, 
Listening to his words, Li Yun Sung leaves him, saying that he will stop if Zhou Yang Biem says, clarifying that at least he can listen to what the head says, which is what makes a team to run smoothly. Zhou Yang Biem acknowledges his decency and likes him the more he observes him. He finally says that he can take care of the businesses that Choi took care of. Quan Chong Su continues to point that he has a snake-like eye, to which Zhou Yang Biem replies that he should listen when the head is taking. He orders Li Yun Sung to clean up the mess. Li Yun Sung felt relieved for he didn't expect him to be fine after that knee kick, and that he needs to be thorough on the future. In the school, the teacher addresses the students that they have to complete the homework and reminded them about the text next week. She then asks Yang Biem to follow her. She recognizes his efforts and praises him for his marks in the mock exam. Observing his gradual improvement, she asks him if she can look forward to getting a hundred in CSAT, to which he laughs it off saying that he is not at that level yet. Zhou Yang Biem is a model student at school, who actually acts like a model student keeping his personal and professional lives completely separate, hence living a perfect double life. He maintains a respectable appearance at school and in front of his family, though being a gangster outside. Li Yun Sung thinks it's thanks to him that he is handling his dirty work. While ordering the other persons to pay attention while working he introduces himself to the members as the new head on place of Choi, saying that it is not that impressive success he is not much. At school, Zhou Yang Biem is seen receiving his test scores from his teacher at school, which secured him a tenth place in the whole school. He claims it was all the hard work of the teacher, giving all the credit to her teachings. When he was about to be seated, a teacher opens the class for and asks for Zhou Yang Biem. Coming to an isolated place, teacher Kim questions Zhou Yang Biem why did he do it. Zhou Yang Biem asked the teacher about the problem. He confronts that he had advised not to get caught for the fact that the tests were given to him. The teacher shows Zhou Yang Biem a post in his phone screen which claims that the test results were leaked to some students. Zhou Yang Biem asks if he had given it to other students, to which he replies saying that he has not given them to anyone except for him while cursing him. The teacher says that he won't he going down alone if he got into trouble. Zhou Yang Biem interrupts the teacher insisting with a serious expression that he was not responsible for the leaked test results. He cautioned the teacher take care at his words and that he is the one who was caught, and further claims that he had put in a lot of money for him every month. Earlier, Li Yun Sung suspected that a teacher might be involved, since it's mainly based on students, which is how they were able to collect much of the data. He discussed the matter with a woman over the phone, who inquired about the placement and the contents of the post. Li Yun Sung decided to let public opinion determine the outcome. Zhou Yang Biem instructed the teacher Kim to delete the post before too many people saw it. Their homeroom teacher oversees their conversation along with Li Yun Sung, who declares that it was the real behavior of Zhou Yang Biem. Stunned by his implications and clarifies that if it's true, and confused here even more since the head teacher is involved in this. He continues to say something to her, while he recalls his previous interaction with the woman, when she asked what he meant by public opinions. He then clarifies that he won't be sending it to the media, which won't be any fun to him. He thinks of using the most dangerous method available in Korea and asks his teacher the reason for her surprise, since he wanted to fill some more interesting information. He claims that Zhou Yang Biem had installed a camera at her desk. In the past, Zhou Yang Biem had gifted his teacher a diffuser, which she appreciated for keeping the room smelling fresh. He instructed her to inform him when it needed refilling. Sitting in front of it now, she recalls their conversation from that day. However, she recently discovered that the diffuser contained a hidden camera, installed for surveillance purposes, to monitor her every move. When she thinks of reporting it to the police, Lee Yoon Sung advices against it warning of potential harm for her, since he specializes in portraying the victim to be a perpetrator. He assures her to leave it to him for now. In his office, Li Yun Sung informs Li Yun Sung and Quan Chong Su that he was targeted via a post on the school bulletin board. He speculates it was either the teacher himself or a high achieving student, seeking their opinions. Quan Chong Su suggests taking aggressive action against everyone, even if he is a teacher or a kid good at studying, confident that his first will know about the culprit. When Zhou Yang Biem is looking at him frustrated, Li Yun Sung interrupts him and criticizes if he always works in such idiotic way. 
Li Yun Sung questions on his intention on this matter was to capture the perpetrator or make a bug issue. Zhou Yang Biam intervenes when Quan Chang Su gets agitated and tries to punch Li Yun Sung. Li Yun Sung advises him to trace the IP of the person that posted it. Since he thought that Quan Chang Su wouldn't do anything useful, he did the work for him right away and gave him a paper containing the details of the post and his address which was located from his IP. Li Yun Sung informs that a high schooler is living at that address, pointing out to the right-hand man to dispatch quickly and deal with him. Zhou Yang Biam with a very furious face orders him to capture and bring him. He thanks Yun Sung since he feels relieved. Li Yun Sung smiles and tells him to ask for his help in the future, but it might cost him more money. The next day in the school, Zhou Yang Biam arrives at the request of the teacher she asks his help, to which he agrees and asks her request. When she begins to explain about the principal's assignment, he noticed that the diffuser is gone and questions her if she threw it away. She replies that she lent it to the principal, who took it away to use for the environmental sanitation and apologies for lending since he gave it for her only. Zhou Yang Biam became very furious since he is really careful about his sex-related business. She remembers his conversation with Li Yun Sung about the dangers of sexual crimes in this country. So, he tells her that Zhou Yang Biam manages it under strict leadership and control, always making an escape plans if there was a problem. And about her case, he clarifies that he might have made an escape route. When the teacher is thinking on a way to tackle him, he asks her to leave this to him since he is going to block his escape path by transforming it into a hidden camera. After his talk with the teacher, Zhou Yang Biam arrives at the lady's staff washroom and thinks that he will be labeled as a bathroom hidden camera criminal. If anyone finds the camera installed in the diffuser, he wants to prevent it from happening and curses the principal for keeping it in the bathroom. The teachers see him standing near the bathroom and tells him to go to his class, and they continue to walk away. He turned himself backwards since he flustered and thinks of a way to enter the place. While they were leaving, they talk about the diffuser which is installed in the bathroom. Thinking about his future, he plans to remove it at all costs and enters the bathroom pretending to be crazy. In his previous conversations with that woman, she asks Li Yun-sung if his plans were to expose him as a bathroom hidden camera criminal. She says that they can track anyone who had installed the camera using digital forensics and focuses on the fact that becoming a hidden camera criminal of like a death sentence in Korea. She concludes her plan of action to expose him to the public by turning him into a woman bathroom hidden camera criminal, to which he disagrees. After much contemplation, he enters the bathroom. To his surprise, Zhou Yang Biam discovers that the diffuser that is being used in that lady staff's bathroom isn't his device. In another bathroom, which is for the male staff, the ethics teacher Min Dong Wook looks at the diffuser and wonders who had installed it, and picks it up to examine it. He observes a light blinking on the diffuser, realizing that it is a hidden camera which is confirmed by another teacher. Listening to their conversation, Zhou Yang Biam is in a panic mode. In his conversation previously, when the woman questioned Lee Yoon Sung about his plan, he says that he never clarified that it will be in a woman's restroom. He plans to make him become the worst kind of pervert and asks her to go public with this discussion that a male student from a prestigious high school installed a hidden camera inside the male staff bathroom. Kwon Chong Su arrived at the Northern Jiangi Province's last rank school, which is Yongsa High School. He talks to a bunch of students who were sitting in the computer lab about a malicious post that was sent by them about someone named Zhou Yang Biam from Siha High School in Gangnam. Quan Chang Su replies that it is what the information in the paper says, that the IP address is from that computer lab. Some students go up to him and ask him about some money and making fun of his accent. He kept on ignoring him for some time which made him realize and get irritated that he got deceived from Li Yun Sung and his everyone on that computer lab out of frustration. He quickly tries to get to the location of Li Yun Sung. Zhou Yang Biam reacts to the teacher's conversation and thinks that there is no evidence and that he'll just say that he didn't know anything. Teacher Kim says that he knew the method to catch the person who installed it. He explains that they can perform digital forensics on a camera and if it didn't work, they can search the camera model and find out the date of purchase and its location. He says that he learned it during the sexual crimes awareness lesson last time. That day, Zhou Yang Biam felt the scary feeling with his sexual education is in Korea, and the horrifying fear of him being a sexual offender in Korea. Sitting on his bed, 
Zhou Yang Biem thinks that he was able to get away with it previously with the help of the head teacher, and wonders about his next step since it's a matter of time that he gets caught. Suddenly, his phone rings when he was busy thinking. It was Li Yun Sung, who wanted to report that day's schedule. Li briefed about his work done in acquiring 10 new cards and the pending task, which is to make a deal with the used cars dealer. He replies that they can have a conversation with him tomorrow, since he is feeling low. Li Yun Sung questions him if it was due to the commotion at school earlier. He says he wants to lend him a shoulder to talk about it and help as much as he can since he is his head. Zhou Yang Biem listening to this opens up and asks him to meet at that moment. Later, Li Yun Sung arrives at the school thinking something has must have happened at school. Before coming to school, they meet up at an alley, where Zhou Yang Biem tells him about a small misunderstanding and to retrieve the diffuser from the ethics teacher drawer, describing its features. Li Yun Sung retrieves it, thinking that the time has come and Zhou Yang Biem thanks him. Li Yun Sung declares that he has nothing to do with it, now that it is in his hands and leaves the spot. Zhou Yang Biem thinks that he is much more useful and he might be needed a lot of times than he needed Chang Su. He observes a tracker underneath the item. Meanwhile, the ethics teacher is on a phone call and says that he is near the location of the tracker while driving a car. Zhou Yang Biem looks puzzled not knowing what to do. The car passes Li Yun Sung, and he recalls his talk with the teacher where he advises her to put a smart tag to locate the device, and asks her to leave it in the bathroom. After it was done, she observes Zhou Yang Biem going in the lady's staff bathroom. At that moment, the ethics teacher arrived beside her, she immediately requests him to check the diffuser in the bathroom, which led him to discover the hidden camera. He quickly calls her and says that the location of the smart tag is moving and he is following it, just as she predicted. Teacher Ho claims that might be person who had installed the camera in the school bathroom. Meanwhile, Zhou Yang Biem breaks the diffuser in the alley and searched for the memory card. When he found the memory card in the rubble, the ethics teacher arrives at the scene and spots him, prompting him to run away. While escaping the spot, Zhou Yang Biem thinks about how did he end up in this situation, while the ethics teacher shouts at him to stop and calling him a sex offender. After running for a while, he sits at the rear of a car, gasping for his breath, but the ethics teacher followed him until the end. Zhou Yang Biem thinks that it is due to one thing and breaks the memory card. He thinks of the fact that the most important part is deleted, all that is left is to clear the remains of the diffuser. The teacher shorts claiming that he knew the perpetrator is around here and gives him a chance as an ethics teacher to reveal himself before him counting to three, to reduce his term of punishment. After he counts to three and hearing no response, the teacher understands that he wants to choose the harder way and starts shouting Siri and Bixby, which are the voice assistants of the two big phone companies, thinking that it will make sound in response. Realizing this, Zhou Yang Biem tries to grab his phone but the phone responds to it, making sound and revealing his position and is caught by the ethics teacher. That day, Zhou Yang Biem could feel how scary a sexual crime is in Korea and the fear behind being a sexual offender along with the terror that approaches him.